before you dive in, what exactly are RGB cuts and gains or, or high and lows? Most monitors and displays have a two-point white balance adjustment. It's essentially like an individual RGB control for the brightness and the contrast or high and low. A lot of manufacturers call them different things. Gains and offsets, cuts and drives. Another thing you have to be aware of is they do they are interactive because you can't just have it adjust the very high end and low end and then adjust nothing in the center or else you'll get some weird kind of gamma curve. So they have to kind of roll across each other. So that means they're interactive. Be aware that when you adjust one, it will affect the other one slightly, the high and the low. So you kind of have to go back and forth to get them both dialed in. I'm going to do a read series and see where we're at right now. While it's taking this measurement, could you explain just a little bit about how adjusting the RGB cuts and gains, how will that eventually affect the accuracy of a 3D LUT uh, calibration you know, once we've optimized the display? Essentially, we want to make the big adjustments here so the 3D LUT doesn't have to do major swings. When you do that, you're much more likely to introduce artifacts in the picture or banding or, or stuff you don't want to see. So you want to make your big adjustments with the RGB controls in the monitor itself and kind of let the 3D LUT fine-tune it and smooth it out. Okay, so what you're saying is that you wouldn't want to just skip this step, not optimize the display and build a LUT because you could po possibly be incurring some additional error in the 3D LUT process. Yeah, and the main thing is they would be visual errors, not just having to make more adjustments in the 3D LUT. It's very common if you're making huge adjustments with the 3D LUT to introduce banding or, or posterization or stuff like that. So you want to get the RGB balance in the display as good as you can get with the display's control itself before you build the 3D LUT. Okay, that's helpful. So before we dive in on actually calibrating the two-point grayscale or white balance on this display, could you just explain what these two charts and graphs are? We've got RGB balance on the left, and we've got a Delta E2000 chart on the right. What, what does this mean? 82 is our, is our 30%. 235 is 100% white. And essentially what we want to see here is red, green, and blue chart the bar graphs all at 100. And that would mean they're properly balanced. So this is showing us, like we saw before, that there's way too much blue in the white. The Delta E2000 chart, essentially the lower the better. We want to get it under three. If you can get it under two, that's really good. Once you hit around one or below, you can just stop. I mean, you can make the chart look slightly better, but it won't affect the overall outcome of the 3D LED. So the Delta E chart shows the measured value compared against the standard value, and this is showing error. So the higher the error, the higher the bar is. Correct. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, go through the process and see how well we can dial this two-point grayscale in. So there's, there's two ways to do this. It's all about personal preference. A lot of people will just take a read series after each adjustment. I like to do one at a time, just do a read continuous and adjust it, and then switch to the lower one. I, I try not to get the 100% white completely perfect before I go to the lower one, because then the lower one will affect the upper one. So I try to just get the upper one close, do the 30, get the 30, like really close, and then go back to the 100 and fine tune that. So I'm going to start with the 100. I'm going to hit recontinuous. It's just going to constantly read. I'm going to go to our two-point white balance controls in our, in our menu. And in this particular display, they're labeled as gain and bias. Gain is the high control, the 100% white control. Bias is the low, RGB low control. And so I'm going to go to the gain and reduce the blue while watching the chart go down and you can see the blue is is going down on on our RG balance chart. I noticed that while you're adjusting blue it looks like green and red are are somewhat coming up. Is that standard or is that what people Yeah, essentially they're all relative to each other. So as you bring one down the other ones come up. So now our blue is pretty accurate. So I'm just going to stop here because like I said if I get this perfect, when I adjust 30, it's just going to mess up 235 again, or 100% white again. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to switch down to the RGB low control, do a read continuous on that, dial that in, and then go back to the RGB high. So I noticed on the 100% white, you decided to turn down blue rather than push red and green up. Is there any particular reason you would want to bring one down versus pushing one up and vice versa? On some displays, 
they don't let you bring the the high, the high control up. They start out at 100 and you can only reduce them. So I, that's the way I usually do it, is try to reduce them. And, and then if I have to, bring bring one up. But I, I usually like just reducing them. Okay. And so if, if somebody did decide to push them up, they would run into things like maybe overdriving the display or, or is yeah, it Especially just... after we found we had no clipping, if you start increasing the the drives or the higher ones, you can introduce clipping. Okay. So when in doubt, always reduce when adjusting RGB balance. Okay, I'm bringing the, the green bias down. That looks pretty good. So that's pretty close. We have a delta E, it's like 0.1 or 0.3. It's a little, it's bouncing a little bit, but that's really good. So now I'm going to go out of the menu and do another read series to see what we have on the higher end. So now I'm going to go back and focus on the, on the high, uh, RGB high control. So I'm going to put that in read continuous. I'm going to go back in. I'm going to bring green down a little bit. Now I'm going to bring blue down a little bit more. I'm going to hit stop. Now I'm going to read a, do a read of them both. So now the delta E's are both under one, which is really, really good. It's no point. I could dial these and make the graphs look a little bit better, but with the delta E under one, that will make zero difference in the actual final 3D LUT. So if you get them both under one, just stop. There's no point in trying to make the graph look any better. It's not going to be, you're not going to be able to see the difference visually. Okay, well, perfect. Let's move on to the next step.